Hello, everyone. Just waiting for a few more folks before we get started. Let me check the time. All right. I think um we're pretty good to get started. But um all right. Um hello everyone. Um really appreciate you all uh taking the time to join me today for the uh advocacy 101 webinar. Um and we're really excited to have you in DC in just about a week to meet with your legislators and uh talk about this important bill. So this is going to be kind of a, a prompt or a kind of a a pre forum refresher for those of you who have gone or for those of you who are new. I'm hoping that this will help you kind of get a get the lay of the land when it comes to a policy forum and just kind of hill days in general as well. Let's see if these slides work. All right, perfect. So policy forum. You know, what is it? So I'm as I'm sure you know, this is a two day event where on the first day you'll be learning about the latest um, OMP legislative and regulatory issues that are um, that the community is is facing and then how they'll affect organizations, uh, providers and patients as well. And then the second day of the forum will be a time for you to educate members of Congress as well as their staff about the importance of OMP care as I'm sure you all know, because you are registered for the policy form. So this webinar will not necessarily focus on the bill entirely, but I'd like to give a short overview just to, as a refresher. Um, we'll also have a, a time to talk about the bill um, during the forum itself on the first day when we do our advocacy education. But this is the, the flagship federal bill that AOPA is pushing for in the 118th Congress. This is the Medicare Orthotics and Prosthetics Patient-Centered Care Act. Um, in the House, it's numbered H.R. 4315, and in the Senate, it is S. 3977. Uh, the bill kind of has three main provisions in it. Um, the first is a prohibition of drop shipping of um, non-off-the-shelf orthoses. So this would be um, kind of those custom-fitted, custom-fabricated orthoses. Um, and this is the, the main uh, fraud prevention uh, provision of the bill. Um, there are bad actors in the Medicare program who prey on Medicare patients by um, via late night ads or, or internet ads that promise pain relief um, through the drop shipment of custom orthoses, which, you know, you need that clinical care to make sure that those are working properly and that they uh, treat conditions um, accurately or well. And so what this bill will do is prohibit this drop shipping practice and allow for clinical care that's needed and will also ensure that um, Medicare is not on the hook for the uh, cost of these complex devices. Um, the second provision of the bill, it uh, exempts practitioners from requiring a competitive bidding contract in order to provide off-the-shelf orthoses. Um, this is essentially a way to ensure that patients kind of have a one-stop shop for all of their needs. Uh, right now, if a practitioner doesn't have a competitive bidding contract, they need to send a patient in need of an off-the-shelf orthosis to another uh, clinic in order to get that device. And if a patient uses a prosthesis on one side and an OTS orthosis on the other side, um, that just adds another barrier to care that's unnecessary and you know makes it harder for folks to get the care that they need. And then the third provision, it's a uh, removal of reasonable useful lifetime restrictions from custom orthoses. Um, this is mainly a way to ensure that folks get uh, timely care um, as currently there are some limitations on when uh, custom orthoses can be replaced. So now 
with proper documentation, these orthoses can be provided to patients before that lifetime of typically about three to five years um, runs out. And so that is very quick uh, overview of the bill. Um, Joe and I will be talking a little bit more about the provisions of the bill on Monday during the agenda, but just wanted to give you an overview before um, the event itself. And you can feel free to go to uh, congress.gov and look up this bill and it will kind of have the text and a summary as well. So I can kind of go into the agenda for uh, policy forum. Um, as I kind of mentioned, the first day is uh, advocacy education. So this is going to be from about one to five um, when we're going to be talking about uh, the bill. And then there are also going to be some, um, there's going to be a discussion with uh, former Hill staffers and current Hill staffers. Um, there's going to be a so everybody can move panel as well to talk about our latest state based initiative. So um, that's the first day. But mostly what I'll be speaking to you all about today is that second day, which will be where um, the Hill meetings take place. And this will be kind of a, a how to guide or, or a tips and tricks guide for um, this kind of Hill Day section of the forum. So in terms of uh, scheduling, uh, this is uh, kind of an important part of the policy forum is on the back end, we schedule meetings with um, all of your legislators, and we are going to provide you that information beforehand so you know where to go and when on the day of. So essentially, um, in a couple days on Friday, you should receive a tentative uh, meeting schedule by email, uh, the email you use to register for the forum. And this will include the, the time of a meeting, um, the building and the room number, and I'll get a little more into the buildings in a little bit, but uh, you also know the staffer's name and email, and then you'll get the uh, office phone number as well so that to make sure that you can call ahead and um, let them know if there's any changes to um, the schedule or if you're running a little bit late, things like that. And then on Tuesday, uh, the day of the um, four or the Hill visits, that is, um, you'll receive your final Hill schedule. And most likely this will be almost identical to the email that you received on Friday, but sometimes there are quick last minute scheduling changes that may take place um, the day of or on Monday. Um, a lot of my time on Monday when I'm not on the panels is going to be um, doing those quick kind of rescheduling requests that happen. So just make sure that to know that the paper that you'll receive on Tuesday morning is the kind of last word about your schedule. Um, so if it's different than the email, I would stick with what the handout says. And then um, also throughout the day, you may get a, uh, a phone call or a text or an email from us, just in case your uh, schedule might have changed um, during the day. That happens sometimes, um, not as much as before. We did some kind of virtual slash hybrid um, Hill Days a couple of years ago, and then uh, that was a lot more um, hectic in terms of scheduling changes because virtual meetings can allow you to be a little more flexible in that respect. So as I mentioned, um, there are a few buildings to the Capitol complex. It's kind of a common misconception that all the work that's done by legislators takes place in the Capitol building itself, kind of in that rotunda area. But there are actually a few office buildings on either side of the Capitol where the staffers spend most of their time and do most of their work. And when the legislator is out of town or if they're you know, in their district doing some work on, while the Capitol's in recess, um, they will be there working regardless. So as you can see, I've kind of color coded this uh, on the orange, the north side of the Capitol complex are the Senate buildings and on the south side are the house buildings. And you can see here that there's um, left to right, Russell, Dirksen and Hart on the Senate side. And then there's Rayburn, Longworth and Cannon on the house side. And so essentially um, you'll be moving between these buildings throughout the day. And I'll have a little bit more information about the kind of 
tips about the Capitol complex right here. So just to let everyone know, um, you'll need to go through a metal detector and a bag scan when entering each building. Um, obviously, they the security is a high priority at the Capitol. Um, I think that it's something that's interesting is that, well, before they, the buildings were largely closed to the public, they are fairly open now. So as long as you you know get through the scans and the security checkpoint, um, you can kind of move between the buildings as you wish. But in terms of timing, um, it does take between uh, 10 and 15 minutes to walk between most buildings in the complex. Um, this has been factored into your schedule, but just make sure if you're running a couple minutes late to call the office ahead of time. In a few of your schedules, there may be an instance, for example, where you have a, a meeting from 10 to 10.30 in Longworth, and then you have a meeting from 10.30 to 11 in Longworth. Um, in those cases, I think it's important to um, let the staff that you're speaking with know, and then also kind of make sure to cut off your discussion maybe five minutes before at, at 1025 in that example, just so that you have enough time to walk to the, the next meeting in your agenda. And then something that's interesting is there are a lot of uh, food options in, in the uh, Capitol buildings, the office buildings that is. Um, there are cafeterias in Longworth, uh, Rayburn and Dirksen, and then there are some carryout options in uh, Cannon, Russell, and the, the corridor connecting uh, Dirksen and Hart. So these are places where you can kind of pick up a quick snack and, you know, keep going about your day. And it's especially good for instance where, where you may have uh, maybe 45 minutes, 30 minutes between meetings, but they're both in the same building and you don't want to leave, go through security again on the way back in, which would take, you know, a little extra time. So that's something to be aware of. Um, we will have some uh, papers in your folders when you get to Policy Forum that will give you some information on kind of food options around the Capitol as well. So this is uh, who you'll be meeting with. Uh, this is kind of a breakdown of the um, types of folks you'll be sharing this information with during the um, the forum. Um, and just to let everyone know that members of Congress are, you know, obviously, as you, you may guess, they're, they're pretty busy people. Um, so you may not have a meeting with your legislator directly, but if you do, it'll be noted on your schedule. It'll, it'll say something like, you know, member level meeting as, in, as part of the information that you'll get in the email and in the printout as well. Uh, there are also kind of three main categories of uh, Capitol Hill congressional staffers. There are the legislative staffers who work on, you know, moving bills and drafting bills, uh, that kind of activity. And there, there is uh, almost a kind of a hierarchy or a kind of a, an organizational structure to that that's pretty standard across the, um, the Capitol space. Uh, there's another legislative director who kind of manages the entire legislative agenda of the member of Congress. Uh, there's a legislative assistant who may, may take one area of that uh, agenda. Maybe there's a, a health care legislative assistant, which would be typically the, the staffer that you will be speaking with during this um, event. And there's uh, below that, there's a legislative correspondent who is working on kind of part of the legislative assistance uh, portfolio. So they'll be assisting the legislative assistants. There's also legislative fellows who are sort of the, it's kind of an internship almost. I'm sure you all are aware of fellowships, but that's the more of a temporary position in the, in the congressional staff world. There's also a counsel who is kind of an in-house lawyer for the member of Congress, just to make sure that uh, the policies that they support or the policies that they develop are legally sound, that they make sense to uh, support or not support, depending on who the legislator is. Aside from legislative staffers, there are policy staffers who are more on the side of um, developing the policies that uh, bills start to enact. So they'll be the ones who are more on the nitty gritty um, policy side of things. And there's policy advisors and policy fellows, which is kind of a similar uh, scheme to the legislative side of things. Other are also um, general kind of staff, like a staff assistant who may help with um, 
you know, generalized tasks around the office as well. So there's actually a, um, a congressional staff definitions page that I've uh, linked right here. Um, I will be sharing this, these slides and the recording of this presentation as well, just to make sure that everybody has the resources that they need. Um, but that link is actually really helpful to kind of have a deeper dive into these roles. And something that uh, a resource that IOPA has developed for you all to make sure that you're really prepared for uh, the meetings next week is a kind of a prep worksheet. Um, this is to make sure that you have the right background for the bill and the legislators that you'll be meeting with. So examples will be, I mean, right here you have their name, their state and district, uh, their party affiliation, um, whether or not they support the bill already, uh, that'll be a big factor in determining whether or not you will be um, kind of going there as a thank you almost, um, or if you'll be going there to ask for their support. And then also there are some other bills that are currently introduced in this Congress that kind of serve as proxy issues for ONP, or in other words, they're issues that if the member of Congress supports this, they're likely to support uh, the Medicare OMP Patient-Centered Care Act. Um, so we have a list of those as well. And we also have a list of committees of jurisdiction that the Medicare OMP Patient-Centered Care Act will be heard in and be considered in as part of the legislative process. I know that I'm sure I don't have to go through the, the Schoolhouse Rock uh, video for you all, but um, there are a few committees that the bill is going to be heard in before it can be voted on by the chamber, like all the members of Congress in the House or the Senate, and then it will move to the next chamber. So knowing that if a, if a member of Congress that you'll be meeting with is on one of those committees is important because that makes the their support a lot more influential, essentially. And I will be sending out this worksheet to you all after this as well. Um, I would recommend, you know, taking some time over the next couple of days to uh, look up your members of Congress. Um, there's a, a link to find your representative and your senators. And then I'm um, doing a little bit of research, you know, take a take an hour and make sure that you know who you'll be meeting with. Uh, there's also, I'm sure, some time for uh, state teams. Um, you'll be able to meet with the people that you uh, and this is from the same state as you um, during the policy forum. And that might be kind of a good activity to, to do some team building, to, to establish some, some rapport, to, to fill these out together. So I think that's a, another way to um, make sure that you're really prepared for Tuesday. And uh, one, another thing I have to share is a kind of a general list of tips for Hill meetings. Um, these are, some of these are fairly self-explanatory, but I thought it'd be good to share just to make sure. Um, you know, being on time is, is very helpful. Uh, staffers have very busy schedules and they meet with quite a lot of people throughout this uh, process. And so to be on time is to make sure that you're, you know, respecting their time as well. Um, being prepared is obviously helpful. Um, that worksheet will be very helpful in that regard, but also um, bringing along the materials that we will provide you at the policy forum is another way to do that, uh, to have the talking points for the bill ready, to have the, the fact sheet for the bill that you can leave behind and, and provide to the staffers so that they have uh, the information that they need to review the bill and make a decision on whether or not they want the member of Congress to support it. It's also good to identify yourself. I think uh, sometimes it's it's easy to just say, hello, all right, this is what you need to support. But it's always good to let them know that you are um, here as part of AOPA and the policy forum, um, to let them know about how you're connected to the district, um, how you're connected to the ONP uh, field and the ONP community. And that kind of leads into uh, tip number four is to establish rapport. Um, sometimes it's really enough to say, you know, I, I met you briefly once at a fundraiser a few years back. That That's enough to, um, you know, get that relationship going or or to notice something on the wall. I think something that's really, really cool about uh, congressional offices in these office buildings is they have a lot of fun paraphernalia on the walls and they have 
you know, pictures of the local sports team that's signed by all the players, or they have um, a common rock formation from the district kind of in the corner and on a little pedestal, things like that. And it's, it's kind of fun to, to ask, oh, what is, what's this about? You know, and, and that's a good way to uh, let them know that, you know, you're a part of the community of which they serve. And it's also important to state the purpose of your visit, um, just to say, we're here to ask for your support of this bill. Uh, that goes a long way to make sure that at the end of the meeting, they're not wondering why you were there in the first place. It's also helpful for uh, larger groups to select a spokesperson. I know there are a few states where there might be um, you know, five to 10 people even in the same group kind of moving throughout the Capitol. And in that case, it, it is helpful to, it may be a, um, kind of the first thought is to have everybody say one part of the, the bill or to kind of popcorn it a little bit. Uh, that gets a little bit difficult when there's a you know a 15 minute or a 20 minute meeting and you want to make sure you get all the information that you can i think there's a way to have one main spokesperson and maybe they ask somebody for their experience as well and it's helpful to talk beforehand to see if anybody would like to share those types of stories um, with each other or with the group um you know very basic shouldn't have to say this but just being constructive and pleasant very helpful. Um, there are a lot of different ideologies at play in Congress right now. Uh, things are very polarized, but this issue and this bill is very bipartisan. You know, it has something for everybody. It it has cost savings for the government, but it also has increased access to care. And it just kind of depends on who you're talking with, which of those you want to emphasize. And then, you know, it's also important to to keep the discussion to the bill itself, um, because this, again, is something that any member of Congress can look at and say, OK, there's something there that I think that I support or that I think my constituents would support. Um, not Number nine is uh, to listen carefully, answer questions truthfully. Um, for those of you who have uh, attended the policy forum in the past, uh, you'll know that I say this a lot, but I don't know, but I will get back to you with an answer is a perfectly acceptable answer to a question that a staffer may ask you. Um, it's it's very easy to want to try to come up with something to make sure that, you know, they, they feel like they have an answer or that you have an answer for them. But it's totally OK to say, you know, that's a good question. I'll, I'll do some research and get back to you on that, because that's another chance for follow up and another chance to uh, build relationships. So I definitely recommend doing that in your meetings if it if it needs to happen. Um, then number 10, uh, at the end of the meeting, you want to wrap up the main points, you know, something like the Medicare ONP Patient-Centered Care Act will ensure timely quality access to care, and it will save the Medicare program money, and we'd really appreciate the congressperson's support for this bill. You know, something like that, just really quick to the point, gives them something to remember um, when they're, when after you leave. And then when you're heading out, uh, a lot of times at these um, fly-ins, there will be multiple fly-ins in a day almost where they'll be meeting with quite a lot of constituents. And so it's important to make sure that you're moving between meetings in an efficient way, especially if they're right up next to each other to make sure that you are, um, you know, giving that time to move from one office to the next and also so that you're on time for your next meeting. And finally, as I, I mentioned earlier, um, following up is really helpful. Um, it gives you a chance to thank the member of Congress for their um, time. It gives you a chance to thank the staffer for listening to them about their uh, about the issue. And then it, it gives you a, an opportunity to build that relationship um, continually. Uh, I know that one thing that's helpful is to get the cards of these uh, staffers so that you have their email and their phone. Um, that way you can follow up with them um, just at your leisure. Um, you can also feel free to ask me to connect you with these staffers. Um, AOPA has an intelligence platform that allows us to um, learn the contact information for various staffers in the in Congress so that I can uh, be of assistance in that regard as well. And then, you know, I think this is something that's important is to just remember that 
you are the expert. You are talking about issues that matter to you. Um, you're talking about the patients that you serve, the um, the organizations that you work for, and the community that you're a part of. And these staffers aren't necessarily experts in the ONP field. So they look to you to make sure that they have the most accurate information that they have to make a decision. And if you're giving them the information that they need to make a decision, um, that's all that matters. And so I think it's really helpful to know that. And also something that's interesting is a lot of members of Congress or, or congressional staffers, that is, they are on the younger side. So I think something that is an interesting aspect of this is a lot of times these younger staffers are making legislative, not necessarily decisions, but they are able to influence um, the member of Congress's final decisions on bills a lot more than you expect. So it's it's important to know that you're the expert in, and you will influence the way that they make these decisions. And you play a big role in this. And it's it's great to know that we have people that are living this practice and living in this community, in this field every day to advocate for this legislation. And uh, finally, um, just wanted to provide my email just in case you have any questions, but um, I'm gonna stop sharing right now just to make sure that we can you know, talk if anybody has any questions about um, the forum. Oh, I actually see a, a question from the chat. Um, so Joan, these meetings are um, typically in groups. I think it depends on the registration. Uh, sometimes there are uh, states where more folks will be registered. Um, and there are some states where there might be only one or two people registered. In the cases where there is um, only one person, um, typically we try to have uh, support from an AOPA staffer or other staffers to help with that first meeting to, you know, get those first meeting jitters out of the way. Um, and then once you kind of know what's going on, it's really easy to just keep going. And at a certain point, it gets, you know, like second nature. I feel like I can rattle off the the pitch for this bill, um, you know, just completely off the top of my head now. And it gets uh, it gets easier as the day goes on. Absolutely. Um, Christy, that is that's a good question. I, I think so. I've brought just like a standard backpack into the building. Um, and I've also brought kind of like a briefcase like. I've also brought like this, basically one of these guys in there. So I think that's probably pretty standard. Um, I don't think it's something where you can bring like a suitcase necessarily, um, but there's that's why we have the the Marriott. Um, Morgan, good question. Anything outside the obvious that's prohibited? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I've just pretty whenever I kind of go to the Capitol for uh, these types of meetings, it's pretty much I would say it's kind of airport security esque. Um, just, you know what not to bring into the Capitol. And they'll also have signs. Just, I think it's um, pretty standard. If you don't think you should bring it into a government building, then I would recommend not. It's one of those types of things. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Feel free to, to unmute yourself or throw them in the chat. Um, definitely happy to answer them offline by email as well. Oh, Nikki, good, good point. I think that's that's interesting. Is that for the um is that to the actual rotunda itself? Like those kind of tunnels? Okay, that's that makes sense. I think that might be um there might be a little heightened security in that um going to the actual rotunda itself. But I've I've definitely been able to bring kind of snacks and things like that into the Capitol just based on um those office buildings specifically. Um, David, the so the hotel is I'd have to I think it's about a fifteen minute walk from the Capitol itself. Um, like the we are the this hotel is going to be on the north side, so you're going to be walking south to um to the Capitol complex. 
about 15 minutes, I would say. Maybe 15, 20 minutes on the on the far end. Um, Audra, I, I believe water is okay. I've I've brought water, I brought my water bottle in. Um I got it right here. It's I think it's pretty standard, but as Nikki said, I think the the getting into the rotunda itself is kind of a different matter. Um that I don't believe that most people at the forum will be or any people at the forum at the forum will be going into the rotunda itself unless they're they have kind of a separate tour organized through the Capitol Visitor Center, which I do recommend people checking out the Capitol Visitor Center. It's really cool. Um, you don't have to also go through security for that, but it is uh it's got a nice gift shop. There's a lot of cool capital stuff. <laughs> um, Morgan, that's that's a great question. Um so we are going to essentially try to group everyone together by state during the forum through uh, table assignments. And uh, that will be kind of the opportunity to um, meet each other and, and um, formulate a plan essentially of action. And uh, Joe, thank you for the, the confirmation. Just wanted to uh, that that's what I was assuming was the case, but I appreciate that, Joe. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, last chance, please. Uh, also, if you have um any questions after this, if anything pops up, please feel free to shoot me an email. Or we have um, uh, Devin. And Joe are also on this call. Uh, they also have done this before quite a lot. So if you need any answers, then please feel free to reach out to us. Hey, Sam, can I throw in one quick thing? Yes. Um, expect the unexpected in the, in the sense of when your meeting starts. Uh, it might show up on your schedule saying you're meeting in such and such room. But once you get there, you may end up meeting in the hallway. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, the staffers will take a meeting wherever there's space. So don't be caught off guard if you're meeting with someone in the hallway. Uh, so that's why it's kind of good to get, you know, that 30 second elevator speech ready in your mind as you approach your meeting to get ready. So if something catches you off guard, you can immediately jump into your little memorized spiel and get yourself back on track. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's that's helpful, Devin. And and I, I've seen people meeting in the the kind of the cafeterias that I mentioned, um, things like that. So it's and that's why it's important to always uh, have your kind of phone ready because we will um, be able to text you or email you any changes to the schedule. I've had to basically tell tell people, hey, your next meeting that's in 20 minutes, it's going to be here instead of here. And so that's just kind of the nature of the day. There's the the Capitol building, as you can imagine, is quite a hectic place. Sam, the only, this is Joe, the only other thing that I will add is that in all of the House and Senate office buildings, uh, there are gonna be multiple entrances. Uh, there will be entrances pretty much on every corner as well as entrances probably along the, the, the street levels, um, but not all of them are available and open to the public. So just, Make sure you pay attention to the signs. Uh, if it is a publicly available entrance, uh, it will say so on the signs. And if it is not, it will usually have an arrow that points to the closest publicly available entrance. Uh, as far as accessible entrances, those are all very clearly marked. Um, so that'll be helpful as well. Just, just, just follow the signs. Um, give yourself enough time to realize that if you go to an entrance and it's not a public entrance, that you have time to walk the you know the 200 yards or whatever it might be to the closest uh, available entrance and then once you're in the building there are going to be certain elevators that are only for the use of members and staff uh, and those will also be clearly marked so just be aware of that um, you, you don't want to I mean it will happen and nobody's going to like physically throw you out of the capitol building as a result but it's 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 kind of um, um, or form to to get into a member uh, a member or staff elevator if you're not supposed to be there you might get some side eye looks so just just it's something to think about and pay attention to once you're inside the building. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's great to to add as well. Thanks, Joe. Um, any 
Okay, I think that having seen no other questions, I think we can um wrap things up. But um, please be on the lookout from the for the on the email that you used to register. I'll be sending the the recording of this, the slides, and then that prep worksheet as well for y'all to use. And um, other than that, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next week. And um, Get excited. DC is a great place to be in the spring and um, we're looking forward to seeing you. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Thanks Sam. Have a great afternoon.